clarity of mind father we come against every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of god we come against it we nullify its activity in the name of jesus we come against thought patterns destructive thoughts arguments in jesus name that are contrary to the word of the lord and so father we pray that your word will proceed with power will proceed with authority in the name of jesus and it will be followed by signs and wonders in the name of jesus father thank you for healings deliverances thank you for revelation knowledge flowing freely unhindered and unchecked in the name of jesus we believe the blood of the everlasting covenant in this oh god auditorium father we declare that the word of the lord will proceed with power and there will be deliverances there will be healings there will be advancements in the name of jesus there will be accelerations in the name of jesus there will be breakthroughs even this day in the name of jesus so father we thank you and we give you the glory we give you the praise thank you for my brother and my sister in none of us will leave this place the same in the name of jesus thank you for an ear to hear an attentive ear we incline our ear to hear you in the name of jesus we thank you father in jesus mighty name be seated let's give the lord a hand of praise and you may be seated in the presence of the lord amen 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 greetings once again family i greet you in the matchless and mighty name of jesus amen amen the song we sang says when the glory comes there will be no words to say um and uh it is just um in line with the scripture, I think it's First Kings chapter 8, the Bible speaks about that um, um, in the temple, the priest couldn't do their function because the glory of God showed up in the place. You know, sometimes we read about these things and um, they seem to be such a, uh, a distant thing. Um, something that maybe we might not experience, but the Lord has been speaking to us about the glory the Lord has been speaking about, about a greater glory and so on, even in this year of uh, great exploits. And I'm trusting God that we will begin to see those days even in our own life. It will not just be a thing that we talk about. Aren't you tired of coming to church and coming and going and coming and going and coming and going and coming and going and coming and going? And the last week is the same as this week, and this week is the same as the other week. You just, it's, it's just that thing. Oh, what are you doing? What are you doing this week? I'm going to church. I'm, I personally am. And if there is anything more than that, Lord, we want that. Some of us have been in this walk with the Lord for a very long time in terms of like really all our lives. We grew up in the church and um, it is really a, a, a desire of our hearts that we would see God doing something that has not been done before. Amen. Oh, bringing back those power days, those days of glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. And the word of the Lord has come forth, and as you heard, I think about two, three weeks ago, that the glory of God has returned and the glory of God has come. And um, <laughs> so this is for love's name. So the song says, when the glory comes, there will be no words to say. So I wish it would have come today so that I don't have to preach. <laughs> Um, but let's see where the Lord takes us this afternoon, I mean this morning, in Jesus' name. Elder Maseko began to talk about sacrifice and he began to touch some of the things that um, I was going to start with. And um, that one, one of them is this, that the Bible says in Romans chapter 12 verse 1 to 2, the Bible says, I beseech you brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Uh, pure and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, it says. And then do not conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Zaloni, I want to start here that the Lord, what the Lord is really, really calling us to, God has got, he received your offering and he is grateful. Thank you. <laughs> he received your song. Thank you. He's grateful. Appreciate it there's something that the Lord is struggling to get it's you I'm starting right there the Lord wants us and the Bible says that it is our reasonable uh, I mean it's our it's a, we should lay our bodies as a sacrifice 
I'm saying this and um, just as I am sharing, the fire that the Lord is going, just like uh, the Bible says that Elijah or Elisha prepared the, the fire there and um, he said, do this, do this. They put the bowl, they put the water and so on. And when, and he prepared the altar, as you know, when the altar had met the required <laughs> whatever from God's perspective, the fire came down. I'm saying something. We've got altars that are empty. And we are putting everything else but ourselves. <laughs> and God wants to release the power of God, wants to release his glory, his, his, his uh, whatever, whatever word you want to use. He's waiting for the sacrifice. <laughs> and we are giving him everything else but us. Starting there this morning. I don't know if that's you. And if it's you, and which I believe it's probably most of us, if not all of us, that God doesn't have all of you yet which are those areas we have not allowed him in and why us not fully putting the required sacrifice is hindering the fire from coming God wants you and I he wants your thoughts right now your thoughts just went whose thoughts were just lingering that mind that is busy going up and down he wants that mind. That it must sit down. It's time for the word of God. And it must be able to listen and sit down. If it's still running, it's, it's a sacrifice. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a sacrifice that's not tied to the altar. It's running around. And some of us are that. And you can talk about any different area of our lives. Psalm 51, verse 16 to 17. Um, we're going to go into the, the message just now, but we just need to start there. Um, the Bible says, Psalm 51, verse 16 and, um, 16 and 17. You do not desire a sacrifice, or I would offer one. You will not reject a broken and repented heart, O God. The sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit, you will not reject a broken and re uh, repented heart, O oh God. That tells us that we can give God everything else, but there's something that God really, really wants. So Lord, we must also remember this, that yes, as much as the things we do on earth uh, count, because the Bible says every man's work will be tried through, through fire. But what we are really, 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 what God really, really is interested in, Jesus didn't come to die for all the other things. So all those other things that we have that we consider as valuable were not worthy of God giving his only begotten son. What was worthy is our souls. It's you and I. And the sacrifice has already been made in terms of Jesus coming. But the question is how much of us does he have? And that can sound like, you know, um, and, and, and this is why the, the message today you'll understand shortly because sometimes we say these kind of things and maybe you don't understand what I'm doing. I just gave you an example that is your mind on the altar? Can God work with your mind? Or is your mind still your mind and it does whatever you want to do with it? The amount of, okay, let's look at the percentage of traffic in your, in your head. Um, by the way, I'm talking to me too. <laughs> okay, so please don't, whatever I say here, it's not, I'm not talking down. I'm talking to me too. If we do our own assessment in our own lives, how much traffic of what's going on in our hearts is subject to God. Just there. If the Lord could give me supernatural powers and I just like uh, um, a spider man, I go like, Tzz. and then I hit you here, I connect there, and then we just display here <laughs> and just see what's happening there in, 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 in those thoughts. Or even my own mind, I'm just joking. But God, family, wants us. I have no doubt that this next move of God. And any other move of God, if you study revival, it speaks about how people began to return back to God. They, not that they were not going to church. They were. But there's something that they began to do. There's something that changed in their posture and their approach to the things of God. That began to cause unusual things to begin to happen. Well, we here in Gauteng are probably the worst. We are the most casual, you know, some of you, some of us, were more on fire when we were back home than we are when we are here. Here we are sophisticated here. 
So think about what I'm saying. So how much of God does... So God had more of you then than he has now. And the Lord is calling us back. Thank you for the offering. We need it. We need to pay the bills. We need to do all the things that we need to do. But that's not what God wants. God wants you and me. And how much of us does he have? Which areas have we restricted him and set and put that danger tape? That or No, not this side. Um, you can come there, but not here. I wish and I pray in the name of Jesus that you would hear this. If, if you forget everything else that I said, remember this one. God called me to come and tell you, hey, buddy, where are you? Where have you been? I'm waiting for you. And sometimes we can be caught up in the church activities and the things we do. Um, I, I've come to that place where I realize I know when I'm praying and I know when I'm not praying. I know when I'm doing a church activity. <laughs> I know when you're doing it. And of course, yeah, it's nice because we move around, you know. So it can look like you're praying, you know. But honestly, on, does God have you? As buyen bazalon, as buyen bafet. I'm here and get like a quantum. I'm here with a quantum <laughs> to pick up a couple of guys just on a trip back to God. Or should we do how train? I don't know which car you want, which, uh, 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 which uh, mode of transportation do you want? Can we, can we go on a trip back to God? Like, like if you can just think of just a, a moment, just a moment, just to show you, just to demonstrate what I'm saying. And if it's not you, it's fine. If it's you, I'm talking to you. Just during, you were here at half past nine or whatever. How much of the connection did you make? Think about it. We were in the here to meet with God. But the bulk of the time while we're in here, we were disconnected. Can you see what I'm talking about? And I'm sorry for the distractions earlier, but besides that, every other Sunday, let's use every other Sunday. <laughs> when you're here, do we leave here saying, wow, I met with God today. Lord, thank you for speaking to me. Thank you for guiding me. Thank you for showing me that. Thank you for that. Or do we live here like, hey, the camera, hey, the, these camera guys were moving a lot today. <laughs> Yo, Apostle's shoe. I want you guys. Come. God wants us. God wants you. I'm here with my quantum. <laughs> God wants us. He wants you. He wants us. He misses us. He misses us. We've got prayer times, yes, but we, we're not connecting. You know, okay, okay, let me, married people, or maybe all of us have been in a relationship. You know when you're not clicking? You're talking, but I, I, there's a disconnection. God wants us. God is calling us back. And if your connection is perfect, please, please, right now is the time to pray for us, the rest of us. God wants us. I just feel like we can even stay right there. God wants you. Maybe let's do that. We've just saying, we just did all that. You were disconnected and looking at everything else. But here's another opportunity to connect again. But beyond this, this song or whatever, that's not the point. There is a fire that God wants to bring on the earth, but he's looking for a sacrifice. He's looking. He's, the angels are ready to, to release the fire. But no sacrifice. Or maybe let's put it this way. No appropriate sacrifice. No fitting sacrifice. Ah, in the book of Malachi, the Bible says, they began to speak, it's a different thing, but just to make this point, God said, you are bringing limping offerings. Because they were bringing a deformed um, goats and all that stuff, literally. Are we guilty of... <laughs> Offering God a sacrifice that is limping. What last did you really, 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 really like? Ah, today, today I had an encounter with him. I'm telling you today, some of you are going to get your mail. 
God is going to remind you where you left him if you left him because he never moved. Amen. Shall we stand and sing uh, the same song? I don't know. I don't know if I was even on the right key, <laughs> but anyway. Uh, Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. Come flood this place. Sing it from the bottom of your heart. Put yourself on the altar. Uh, the Bible tells us about Isaac. <laughs> Can you think about it? Oh, a uh, uh, youth vibe. Sorry, guys. This is just for, for, for jokes. They say apparently Isaac was around teenage stage. That's why the dad was willing to put him on the altar. <laughs> you missed it. <laughs> That's a joke. Uh, but can you imagine, oh God, can you imagine Isaac being tired by his father, being put on the altar and staying there? That is what God is calling us for. Stay there. Stay on the altar. Stay on the altar. Please, please, please take it away. We'll sing and uh, let's see where God takes us. I don't know if you know if I'm going to preach, but if I preach, Holy I will. Spirit, you are but my preaching will be futile if it's landing on uh, looking for you come closer say holy spirit if you want to kneel you're welcome to kneel if you want to come to the altar you're welcome to come to the altar whatever he tells you to do just do it
Father, we thank you that the glory of the Lord is here and we are the sacrifice. We yield to you that you may be glorified through our lives. Father, we pray today in Jesus' mighty name. Father, here at Gateway, that every time we come in this place, that none of us will leave this place the same. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, thank you for healing that marriage. Thank you for healing that family. Thank you for healing, oh God, those different areas. In the name of Jesus. But above all, we thank you for healing our relationship with you. For restoring it. Ah, for removing the bitter waters. Restoring the joy of salvation. In the name of Jesus. While well, the children of Israel had this kind of a thing. The waters were Mara. And Lord, your word says you, they, you instructed them to put the, the tree and the waters became sweet again. This morning, we put the tree of the cross that our relationship will be restored again. Sweet, sweet walk, a sweet relationship, a sweet prayer times, sweet times in the word, sweet, sweet walk with God, sweet dreams and visions. Ah, thank you. Ah, what we have never even experienced before. you're bringing us back. Thank you. Father, we stand on, our, on behalf of our nation. South Africa, before 94, you prayed. South Africa, you sought the Lord. There were prayers all over. What happened? Father, we thank you for restoring our nation back to you. In the name of Jesus, thank you for restoring our communities back to you. The levels of crime, the levels of Oh God, unrighteousness are indicative of your absence in our midst. And so, Father, we thank you that you, O oh God, are restoring this nation, are restoring your church. Church, come back. Church, come back. In the name of Jesus, Father, the church globally, in the name of Jesus, we stand here on behalf of the church as we are part of the body of Christ. And so, Father, we thank you for a new thing you are doing. Thank you for a new thing. Oh, Father, oh, the sacrifice is aligning. The sacrifice is meeting the requirements in the name of Jesus for this greater glory. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father. Thank you for healing hearts church hurts, whatever, whatever, whatever it's called. Thank you for healings, destructions of whatever, who did this, who didn't do that. Ah, Lord, heal and restore. You died for us. As a matter of fact, not for the organization. <laughs> so, Father, we have been destructed, and therefore, Lord, we come back to you. In the name of Jesus, um to one by one, just as I am, I come to the garden alone. So we thank you this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you.
Tinga wena, ake komuni o. for this message because now connects exactly to what God wants what has just happened connect exactly to where God is taking us first the book of first Samuel chapter 5 verse first Samuel chapter 5 from verse 1 I want to speak to us about the ark of God and uh, well the glory of God is really the title of the message But the ark of God was what signified the glory of God in the context of the Old Testament. So whenever you see the ark of God, it represented that God is in that place. Because God dwelt in the ark back in the day. But you know that in the New Testament that is not the case. The Bible says that these things are written for our learning. So I'm just going to look at two things and then we're going to close. Um that are going to connect to exactly what just happened now. So the Bible says when the Philistines captured the ark of God, they brought it from Ebenezer to Ashdod. Then the Philistines took the ark of God and brought it into the house of Dagon and set it up beside Dagon. And uh, when the people of Ashdod rose early the next day, behold Dagon had fallen face downward on the ground before the ark of the Lord. So they they took Dagon and put him back in his place. But when he rose early on the next morning, behold Dagon had fallen face down on the ground before the ark of the Lord, and the head of Dagon and both his hands were la- uh, laying cut were lying cut off the threshold. Only the trunk of the of of Dagon was left to him. This is why the priests of Dagon and all who entered the house of Dagon do not tread on the thread um the th- uh, th- 
threshold of Dagon in Ashdod to this day. The hand of the Lord was heavy against the people of Ashdod, and he, ter- and he terrified and afflicted them with tumors, both Ashdod and its t- um, territory. And when the men of Ashdod saw how things were, they said, the ark of God of Israel must not remain with us, for the hand, uh, for his hand is hard against us and against Dagon, our God. Amen. So this is a story of the ark of God being found in a wrong place. They had taken it from the children of Israel during war. I just want to ask to zoom on to something and then we're going to go to another place and then we're going to sum up and go. The ark of God was stolen from the children of Israel who are the rightful owners or, yeah, for lack of a better word, custodians of the, of the, of the ark in that, in that story. And um, it is now found in the enemy's camp. So let's put it this way. Let's say it, is the, it belongs to the righteous but it happens to land on the unrighteous territory. Check what begins to happen when the ark of God begins to come in a territory that is not in alignment with God. So they had their God that they were serving. As you can hear, his name was uh, uh, Dagon. The first time they put the ark of God, the ark of God represents the glory of God, the presence of God. Everything God was to the chain of Israel was in there. That is why there was an outer court, the inner court, the Holy of Holies. What made the Holy of Holies, what the Holy of Holies was this ark. Because it was there. It represented the Shekinah glory of God. There were, um, uh, maybe I should have put a picture, but it doesn't matter. There were uh, two cherubims on it and so on. Just Google the ark of the covenant, you'll understand. So they took this thing, thinking that it's just a thing. But they didn't know it was God's house. (laughs) So they take the God of the children of Israel, they bring him into their territory. And what begins to happen is exactly what I just read. Their God was dismantled. Oh, I'm coming. Their God was dismantled. When you take the presence of God and you put it in a territory with all sorts of things, things that are not in alignment, will be dismantled and i'm saying as we are returning to god and we are coming back and putting ourselves on the altar and the glory of god returns and begins to uh, you know whenever we use this word that the glory of god is returning it means it had left or we want more (laughs) if you read that story of the, the very same passage if you go back or in the same same chapter this is where the, uh, Eli actually died. Um, the, you know, it's a previous chapter. Eli died and his sons, and that's how the, the, the ark was captured. And the story goes on to say that um, Eli's uh, uh, um, in-law, uh, Eli's Magoti, who was married to Hoff Phineas, I think, said when he, she heard that her husband had died and that the father had also died, he, she then named a child Ichabod which meant the glory of God has departed. (laughs) There's a story for us as a family. Uh, Lumko's other name is in Gazimulo. Because God told us that the glory of God is coming back to the church. That's back in the day. But anyway. So Ichabod represented that the glory of God is leaving the church. Has left the church of God. And then the, the ark was taken, of course, to to the house to to the house it actually literally says to the house of Dagon and I like it because of where we're going next the ark was taken to the house of Dagon check it out on verse 1 when the Philistines captured the ark of God they brought it from Ebenezer Ashdod the Philistines took it took the ark of God and brought it into the house verse 2 into the house of Dagon and when it got there we know what happened the destruction that happened And I'm here to say to us, Vazalwani, that as we bring the presence of God and the very presence of God, ark of God, inverted commas, the presence of God into every sphere of influence, we are going to see these kinds of things beginning to happen. The dismantling of systems, the dismantling of all sorts of uh, unrighteous things, dismantling of all sorts of evil in the name of Jesus. Evil has been flourishing because the ark is not there. Church, Ark, Connect, everything. 
when the church of God, God dwells in us now. He doesn't dwell in the ark. He's in you. So wherever you go, you are carrying the presence of God. As a matter of fact, it means in this story, if it was back in those days and they had captured someone who had the Holy Spirit in, in terms of the new government uh, model, they would have locked him up with Dagon in that room and Dagon would have still been dismantled. Because it's not an inferior presence. The problem with us, Bazalwan, is that, and, and most of us, and even me, even me, I hear about revival, but I've never really, really seen it like that. Like, I read about it, I've seen movies, I've seen, I mean, stuff. But in terms of being in it, like to see it like that, I don't know it myself. So that is why when we come here and we say, oh, the glory of God is here, you're like, yeah. But you don't even know what that means. We say, hey, amen. What does it mean? Whatever it means, amen, whatever God, just do it. We agree. And the, 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 the other thing about that is that when the Lord says that glory has returned and blah, 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 we can say amen without really believing it because we're like, yeah, whatever. Because we do not even know what we are agreeing to. And so it is important, part of the, today's uh, 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 um, message is to try to help us understand what do we mean when we're busy saying that the glory of God is returning. So that when you say amen, because the thing is, your amen is not fully there. It's just an amen, uh, but it's not from the heart because our amen, <laughs> sometimes when I say you, I feel bad. But uh, our amen sometimes is not, it doesn't have sata, babampof. <laughs> it doesn't have uh, the real uh, things that make up an amen. Let's say amen is made up of three elements or five things. Your amen, our amen will have the other two, but has the other one because you're not even sure what you're agreeing to. But if you have a full understanding of what, that's why, let me show you, let me show you, let me show you, the glory of God is coming, amen. You are getting a house, amen. Have you noticed that in the church? Have you noticed it? Because that one you can relate to, so your, your amen there has power because you know what you're talking about. This other one is like, yes, man of God, I agree with you, I agree, yes, yes, let it be done. But you don't really agree because you don't know what he's talking about. He might mean we are repossessing your house. <laughs> So you, you, you don't, when you don't know, you, you have this uksabanyana in your approach. So here we are, we are saying, oh, we are chasing after God. If you do not even understand, that's why you don't come. Because you're like, whatever. <laughs> do you understand? And so I think it's important for us as the church to also speak the language that people understand and break it down. So that people, even if they don't know our Christianese, they will understand what are we busy saying. Because sometimes people might not want to partake of a particular meal only because they don't even know what it is. Like, is it sushi? What is it? I don't know if I want it. Amen. So the glory of the ark of God goes there, which is the glory of God, etc. And then we see this dismantling of, 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 of uh, the God of, um, of the Philistines. Now, here is the very same ark going to the next story here's the very same act i'm talking to you about the glory of god so just just a glimpse so that when we talk about this at least even if you can agree with just this portion the rest of the holy spirit will like, will reveal to you now we're going to the next scripture you'll understand how this connects to second samuel chapter 6 verse 5 to 12 second samuel chapter 6 verse 5 to 12 and the bible says and david and all the house of Israel were celebrating before the Lord with songs and uh, lures and harps and uh, tambourines and uh, castanets and cymbals deserve. And when they uh, came to uh, deserve is the, dra the drama, so that's why I'm saying cymbals. It's him. And uh, when they uh, when they came to the threshing floor of Nacon. Uzzah put out his hand to, to, to the ark of God and took hold of it from the oxen, uh, for the oxen stumbled and the anger of the Lord was kindled upon Uzzah and God struck him down, uh, God struck him down there because of his error and he died there besides the ark of God. Don't let that scare you. Um, <laughs> and David was angry because the Lord had broken out uh, against Uzzah. And that uh, place is called Per Uza to this day. And David was afraid of the Lord that day. And he said, how can the ark of the Lord come to me? So he's scared. He's like, mm -mm. 
if people are dying around this thing, I don't want it in my house. So David was not willing to take the ark of the Lord into the city of David, which was where they were going. But then listen to the part. This is the, the, the story you're going to. But David took it aside to the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite. And the ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, three months. And the Lord listened to this. And the Lord blessed him, blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. And it was told King David, the Lord has blessed the house of uh, Obed, household of Obed-Edom and all that belongs to him. Because of the ark, that's the reason he was not just blessed. Listen, to the reason is stated clearly. He was blessed. The Lord has blessed the household of Obed Edom and all that belongs to him because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed Edom to the city of David with rejoicing. Here's a scenario, a different scenario. Same ark, different people. The, right, the previous time, the ark was in the place of the unrighteous, the enemies of God. This time, the place is on the side of, in the house of someone who is in alignment with God. I actually asked myself, I tried to figure out, why Obed Edom out of all the people? Or oh, maybe they were just around the corner, Obed Edom was just here. But I don't think that would have been the case. Because the ark of God was a very, very important thing. Just like someone just died now. It means whoever would have taken this must have been a righteous man. Otherwise, the following day, his entire house, and he, oh, 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 Jesus, listen to where you're going now. If this guy was willing to take his, this ark into his house, that means his entire household, entire household was in order. Otherwise, we would not be hearing a story of them being blessed would be hearing a story of hey, Lapagua Obed Edom, hey, yeah, 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 children are just dying. Yo, the mates are, are gone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Things are going bad because when the ark is in, a, in the place of the unrighteous, negative things begin to happen. But when the ark of God is in the place in the in the in the house of the righteous, we see the blessing of the Lord beginning to manifest. Connect that to what just happened this morning. That's what I'm saying. This is where I see the connection. So, okay, before we connected, I then went and searched Obed Edom because if someone like this happened to uh, something like this happened to this guy, what happened? Where is he? What happened post the ark coming to the house of Obed Edom? Let me just give you a lit, some of the things that happened post Obed Edom. Um, uh, uh, um, um, uh, uh, receiving the ark. Of course, what's clear is that God blessed him. The blessing, Apostle has preached this message many years ago. The blessing was so evident that uh, President Sela Ramaphosa had to be told that something is happening in that guy's house. So I'm trying to imagine what was happening, what kind of activities were happening in that place such that they were newsworthy. When the ark of God is in the house of the righteous, some newsworthy things begin to happen. Some things that are unusual. So that tells you that Obed Edom was known to be Vosilie Weah, is that guy. But all of a sudden, something changed about this guy that was visible to the entire nation to the extent that they had to tell the king about it. Such that the king said, Oh, okay, if this thing is working for you, I know I want it for myself too. It must have been a significant thing that was very, very distinct or unusual. Here's the connection so that I don't, I don't, I don't digress. The connection for us as we have just done this. We are leaving this service. We are taking the presence of God back to our homes. The struggles we are having, the whatevers we are having, just introduce the presence of God when was born. The presence of God was introduced in the house of Dagon, negative circumstances, and the negative circumstances were dismantled by the presence of God. Just the pr his presence alone is able to dismantle situations and change circumstances that would normally not be changed. So I'm saying to us this morning, Basalwani, if you leave anything else, don't leave the presence of okay, we are taking God back to our homes. Not temporarily. The Bible says the ark was in the house of Obed Edom for three months. This phenomenal, this unusual thing that happened in his house happened for three months. 
but it was so powerful that the king had to be told about it and that made the king to want the ark to come to him ark prince of god glory of god whenever i use that word that's it so i've already said that, that he must have been a man of, of, of a good man or a man of faith <laughs> to a degree to allow that thing that just killed someone now to come into his yard he must have had faith in god he must have had a relationship with god to a certain degree so the bible then tells us on different occasions obed edom in this particular case well this is not the bible it's what happened of course obed edom hosted god in his house and the glory and the splendor of god came in came into his house because when god walks into the house he comes with all that he is his glory his splendor his his uh blessedness <laughs> when i bless her when they say bless us when they talk about bless us they say it's these guys who are giving people money when you have a blessing in your life it's visible like it ah huh? you don't know no you don't have a bless i'm not saying you do <laughs> i'm just saying these people who have blessed us their lives change <laughs> don't be scared it's okay eh? we'll do altar call after when you have a blesser eh? <laughs> i want to introduce you to a better blesser <laughs> When you have a blesser in your life, <laughs> your life changes. I can't keep on now. The, the Brazilian weave, we know them through these guys who have like the, the good blessers and Dubai's and all that stuff, right? No, ah, come on, guys, come on. Hey, Mzansi for show. Sure. Come on, let's talk South African stuff. It's true. They say, like, this person doesn't wake. This person just wakes up and drives around and posts pictures, but they live the greatest. They have the most expensive of everything, but they don't work. They have a blesser in their life. And the blesser is funding the lifestyle, they say. So when, when the blesser comes into it, I'm using this concept of a blesser, Bazaar <laughs> When the blesser comes into your life, he comes with, his, with all his splendor. Again, to show you who he is and what he can do. You will drive better, you will eat better, you will live better, you will whatever. Everything will be better by reason of association with the blesser bless her god so go with me i won't call out a call so let's use this blessing got here seven of this example <laughs> of the blesser the blesser so you are the blessee <laughs> so god wants to bless you and god wants to be a blesser in your life and when he comes into your life he comes with all his glory all his bling when the blesser is in the life of the, that lady guys come on you know what i'm talking about we, we, there was even documentaries about these kinds of people that their lives just automatically change one day you is walking yellow pages the next day range rover that's obed edom stuff guys one day obed edom didn't even have a bicycle the next day obed edom has a fleet of luxury cars i'm using things that you can relate so that you can say amen <laughs> so that's obed edom kind of stuff when the blesser god when the glory of god is in your life he comes with his splendor the bible says i stand at the door and i knock you know that scripture anyone who opens i will come and dine with him so and when god comes and dines with you don't worry we're not gonna go uh kind of what's that thing 50 50 what do they call it what is it we're gonna go it's not jewish what's the thing when you gonna share share the bill i forgot what it's called um never mind but you do, you're not gonna share the bill when he comes he will take when he says i'm coming to dine with you he will pay the bill he will pay the bill and i'm saying today family there's a blesser i'm introducing you to i came to collect a couple of people earlier when with the quantum or maybe a <laughs> viano maybe a vitlas i don't know uh, or whatever and we are we are reconnecting with our blesser we are connecting with God in this case and just for you to have an idea of just just carnal things that we are talking about that phenomenon that happens in the life of a person when they just win lotto and their life just changes overnight it's the kind of things that began to happen in Obed Edom's life when God came into his life disclaimer I do not want you guys your appetite to go high on those things only because that's one of the things that has killed the church. Our appetite is so high for things that it quenched God. We don't want him anymore. 
we want what he can do for us so we have a generation that has come up that knows God does things and we drive better in this generation we do better in this generation and that is good and it's great it's for the glory of God but we should not allow our appetite for those things to be so high that it quenches and grieves the Holy Spirit I use those carnal things just for reference to understand the extent that God can transform your life some of us here are in need of whatever it may be but the Bible tells us that Obed Edom's life was changed to such a degree that the king had to be told they don't mention what happened but it must be something visible whether Obed Edom started praying for people and they get sick I mean healed whether Obed Edom started becoming the great the wisest person whether Obed Edom started to have a different lingo whether I don't know what 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 the, the the magnitude of the impact of the presence of God in his life was but I can guarantee you it was visible and God wants to do the same for you he doesn't want to be in our lives and agbonaga look what he is in our lives and yes range rovers and all but I'm more interested in true riches true riches is these things that we don't really like Uguti, you are an, a nicer person to hang around yes why do you want oh, you want the range rovers so, 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 ah, I got you no 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 the true riches are exactly that that God wants to bless you with these things but they should not go up here they should not, we, should, we should not be like the, the guys in the world when God blesses them, they are flaunting and I'm not saying we should hide, we should give God the glory blah blah blah, but there, are, there is there is law. there is this spirit that comes with how the world do, does things and God is going to bless you regardless but I'm saying be careful because the thing that begins to move us from God it's the love of money the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, all these things that begin to really, for example, Bazalan, I don't want to lie to you. Ne? Life can be really rough, okay? And it can be so rough that it overwhelms you. That you know what? You are so busy just trying to keep your life together <laughs> that, you know, God, I'll see you. Let, let's just try to keep this boat sailing. It happens. It happens. Can I be real? I can be real and, and that's the case we've had it rough ourselves such that you feel like you like God I'm still there don't worry but I'm just trying to sort this out because uh, I prayed you didn't solve it so I, I'm handling it myself now yeah I'm busy God I'm busy handling what you didn't want to handle I get uh, anybody in the room uh, come on uh, okay uh, though all those who are who are not uh, uh, um, whose hands are not up altar call come <laughs> Because you're not telling the truth for real, for real. I tell you, when life really slaps you, oh, oh, okay, they normally say that it's either you are going through that, um, if you're not going through it, just keep living. But it's, it's, it's those seasons that happen. But we don't wish you any, any negative thing, but we do understand we've got different seasons. But remember, um, um, I might be saying this, and I'm talking about, oh, I don't have petrol money. Someone is going through the same thing, but they've got million, million rands problems, you know. So maybe they might not associate themselves with us because we, we need just 300 for petrol or something. So, but you've got a, there's, there's, what I'm, my point is that, Things can happen at whatever level you are in. Whether you have a million rands problem, a thousand rands problem, a hundred rand problem, life does happen. Or you have client problem or whatever, whatever it may be. Life that can happen and does happen. All right, so here's another thing that began to happen in, uh, in, in, in Obed Edom's life. Because I was asking myself, so if this guy, guys, think about that privilege. God in those days was not everywhere like with the Holy Spirit. So he was in one location. And he chose to stay in your house. Think about it. So it, something must have happened in this guy's life. Because the presence of God alone. Money, money just makes you to glow. Do you know that they say those kinds of things, right? Yeah, I'm on a motor. Hey, there's a glow now. It's a glow of ching ching, you know. <laughs> or whatever, whatever. That, no, but, but when you are having a good time or living a good life, you start seeing man. Hey, man you look different. Ah, no, no, it's nothing. But it's the bank account. Because <laughs> when there's nothing, you, you, you are always the ish. Then you start doing that thing, you know. 
so we can see you clearly that ah that side no yeah i'm not doing it right it's this one yeah this one <laughs> no no that, that's just a joke guys <laughs> but when when someone is going through something it's visible and when someone is having a good time it's also visible and it's exactly what i'm saying that obed edom okay yeah my time is up obed edom is life things began to change visibly so and one of the things and this is where i'm saying one of the things that began to happen the bible says and this is the, the, the very interesting thing that i didn't i didn't realize so then david comes to remove the ark of god from obed edom's house obed edom is not prosperous guys like things are happening in his life he is like having like god is blessing him mightily in 2024 21st century when the ark is moved to be taken to the place where it's going to be taken and to the temple blah 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 in 21st century uh, um, standards someone will say guys i have any your cons go ahead mean i'm fine now because that's what happens when life is good to us god i'll see you later <laughs> So here's Obed Edom and check what happened the influence of God's presence to his heart this is what I'm going for now The book of First Chronicles 26 verse 4 to 6 speaks about Obed Edom he has been blessed by God but when the ark is moved to be put somewhere else he is found as the gatekeeper in the house of the Lord He's okay let's I can't we use monetary he's wealthy now he's fine his family his children everyone is fine he doesn't need god like in in 3 months he became a billionaire but something happened the presence of god did something in him that he said i would rather be a dog keeper in the house of the lord i am not moving away from this god the ark moves the prosperity is still visible but he says i am going where this ark i have all that i have because of this ark wherever it goes i am there i am following i am chasing after the presence wherever he is i am there it's there it's there it's there it's, there. it's a second but let's not read it because of time my time is up The Bible says Obed Edom had it's all in the Bible Bazalan go check it out go search Obed Edom Obed Edom and his 68 associates which is ministers people who were working in his house uh, were, were, regu- were regularly before the Lord in worship The guy is wealthy He doesn't need God But they were found regularly The impact of the real presence of God in the heart of Obed Edom his sons and grandsons also worshiped the lord and were blessed it is all found in the in 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 the book of chronicles it's all there if you can read chronicles 26 there it even goes further to say that Obed Edom and his sons were the gatekeepers of the southern gate so the impact of god's Uh, uh, presence in their life made them even more committed to God. They didn't use God as this what a get rich quick scheme. Get blessed, we say you tomorrow t- tomorrow this time you will be this. Tomorrow after tomorrow's evidence you're going to come and testify and that's the last time we saw you. Or you will be trickling in now and then in the house of God. We taking the house the presence of God back to our homes. We are taking the presence of God everywhere we go. We are not doing this thing of uh, 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 I'll see you later and so on. And we are trusting God that even as the glory of God, Pasalane, I I I decree this and I pray in the name of Jesus that you will be if you can just do it. You will begin to see the unusual beginning to happen in your life. I mean in every area of your life. I I mean everything. That because when the glory of God came in Obed Edom's life unusual like it's not normal began to happen in 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 Obed Edom's life and house and one other, one other thing that began to happen as David took the ark to to his house remember we were in chapter 6 in chapter 7 the bible says David well David of course also took the ark in chapter 7 the bible says that when David took the ark to his house the word of the lord began to come to David 
I'm saying something, right? Okay, let me show you what I mean. Second, second Samuel chapter 7. Now it came to pass, from verse 1, now it came to pass when the king was dwelling in his house, David, and the Lord had given him rest from all the, his enemies all around him, that the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in the house of Cedar, but the ark of God dwells inside uh, tents um, and, and, and curtains. Then Nathan said to the king, Go do all that um, um, is in your heart for the Lord, uh, for the Lord is with you. If you, I didn't copy that, the rest of that. If you continue, yeah, just, just go to verse 4, let's see. But it happened that at night, yeah, there it is. This is the verse I missed, I didn't take it. So here is the, uh, de, uh, who's this, um, David. The ark is, is with him now, it's in his city. At night, here, yeah, the word of the Lord, at night the word of the Lord came to Nathan saying, okay, continue. Go and tell David, my servant, uh, that says the Lord who, uh, the Lord, who, uh, would you build a house? Okay, it goes on, but here's what I'm, where, where I'm going with that because of time. The word of the Lord began to come into David's life. He began to hear God. In this particular case, of course, Nathan was the prophet. Unlike with us, we've got the Holy Spirit. But the key thing here is the word of the Lord began to come into, into David's life by reason of the ark. If the word of the Lord is scarce in your life, bring the presence of God back. Bring the presence of God back. Don't leave this meeting today and not make that decision that I am going back to fellowship with God. I am going back to, to spending time with God. I am going back to aligning my relationship with God to be in its best form. So the word of the Lord began to come back into the life of, of, of David. So we see in very, in, in, even if it, because of time, I'll just stop here. If you go into the New Testament, Jesus came to reveal the glory of God. And the life of Jesus in Jay is just an unusual life because he walked with God. So Jesus then comes and says to us that um, he is not leaving us alone, but is leaving us with the Holy Spirit. That now the Holy Spirit will dwell with us, that God has to be with us all the time. The key thing that I'm bringing up there is that in Jesus' life, all the healings, it's the demonstration of the glory of God. It's the glory of God on display. All the provision, five loaves and, and two fish, it's the glory of God on display. Speak, in the, speak the word only and, and, uh, and, uh, and my son will be healed. It's the glory of God on display give you another blind Bartimaeus blind eyes being open it's the glory of God on display oh we need a tax and we don't have money go to the fish you will find a coin in the mouth of a fish it is the glory of God on display what am I saying is that when we're busy saying the glory of God must come we are talking about these unusual things that God wants to begin to do there are unusual things that will it will take a certain level of unusuality is that a word <laughs> to transform nations have you seen even, even celebrities are scared to go to parties now because people are being killed everyone is just there's just a random shooting anytime any day it is evident that there is an Ashdod who is standing and Ashdod can only be I mean there is a Diagon who is standing and Diagon can only be dealt with by the ark of the Lord if you and I can begin to take the presence of God everywhere we go and not put him on and off when we come to church and when we go home we are by ourselves we will begin to see a dismantling of things even in our nation this nation is at the crossroads and it will take the very presence of god it will take a church that is aligned with god to begin to turn things around the next five years of this nation if we make the wrong choice it's gonna be bad it's gonna be it's gonna move from bad to worse but it is through the presence of god it is through the power of god it is through the governmental church that we will be able to be able to turn things around but not by power not by might but by the spirit of god family i don't know if you're hearing me if you are not i pray that the lord will begin to minister to you and begin to open this up for you god sent me to say to you where are you it's been long I almost sang an R&B song <laughs> because I've got that tendency. Uh, yeah. So where are you? It's been long. Come. The, 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 the world is waiting for a glorious church. A church that carries the very presence of God. 
a church that demonstrates the glory of God a church that is not uh, the absence of the glory of God brought us to the place of false and fake miracles because now we had to fake it and make it seem like God did what he didn't do not us I'm saying what's happening out there but God is retaining the church to its rightful place so, you know sometimes when we say this because we are in the church when you say oh Lord is in the church you're like amen but you're saying yeah this building yeah yeah no you and I are the church so if you and I align the church is aligning automatically you get it if you don't get it you must get it you're not gonna say forget about it <laughs> shall we stand as you're about to pray you must get it it is very very important otherwise we are we are missing it God is taking us somewhere. God has a plan for the church. And I believe even Gateway Church, if we could put, put if we can post, if we can have a, the correct posture, we will see the glory of God manifest in this place in ways we have not seen before. I mean, Barcelona, this is the key word you need to understand when we talk about the glory of God. Unusual. So anything that your mind can conceive and beyond, that is unusual. That's what comes with the glory of God. It begins to make things that would not normally happen to begin to happen. Amen. Let's close our eyes. And talk to God. If you are available. This one, Bazalani, it's not even about, I don't know, you know, if I, if I had my way, I know God gives us an, a will and an option. He should not be giving us an option on these kinds of things. If we are saying we are part of the body. These ones are, are non-negotiables. If you're part of the body, the bull's eye is there. We are chasing God. We want his presence. We want his glory. That's it. That's what we are chasing for. Because when we die, we say what? Uh, he went to glory. <laughs> so, but we don't want that next glory. We want the glory that God manifests right here. Hallelujah. Lift your voice. Just respond to the Lord. Father, we just want to thank you. We recognize that you are indeed calling us to a deeper place. You want us to come and commune with you. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus, that Lord, where we have missed it, that you will begin to bring us back. In the name of Jesus. Father, we declare from this week, we will have, a, oh God, such a powerful time of fellowship with you. We will experience your glory like never before. Father, like Obed Edom, Father, we pray in the name of Jesus, as we welcome you in our midst, we will begin to see the unusual taking place in our lives. We will begin to see the manifested glory of God in its different forms. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, thank you that, oh God, things that concerns us will be taken care of. Father, it will be so evident that our friends will know about it. It will be so evident that our neighbors will know about it. It will be so evident that our colleagues will know about it. Business partners will know about it. Business associates will know about it. In the name of Jesus. Our banks will ask, what's going on? Are you still in money what's happening what's going on but it is the glory of God manifesting in our midst in the name of Jesus father we thank you for all the tangible and non-tangible things that we'll begin to see in our lives the peace that comes with the glory the joy that found in the glory oh God that the, 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 the excitement that is found in the glory oh God the acceleration that comes in the glory father we thank you that you are doing even at this time Lord God we ask of you that you will begin to do a new thing in us in Jesus mighty name we thank you father even as we use this illustration of a blessing we welcome you as our blessed just do that which only you can in the name of Jesus in our lives father do what only you can in the name of Jesus father restore an appetite like never before in the name of Jesus we thank you for restoring and aligning us today and we thank you for the glory of God that is dismantling every altar Oh God of Dagon in our lives, in our surroundings, in our workplace, in oh God our communities, in our nation, in the name of Jesus. Lord, you are looking for a remnant. Lord, we are saying we are available. We are available. Your eyes are going to and fro, searching, searching, searching. And this morning, Lord, we are saying search no further. We are available. We will stand in the gap. We will be a demonstration of the glory of God. We will be, oh God, those people whom you can display your splendor and your glory through in the name of Jesus.
We give it glory and praise to them. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen. We're done. We're done. We're done. If there's anyone who's here who wants to give their life to the Lord Jesus, that's where it starts, or want to rededicate their life to the Lord, please just lift your hand. We want to pray with you. We want to pray with you that you will experience the power of God. Um, and that's where it starts. We all started there, reconnection with God. It starts with a relationship with God. Anybody going once, going twice. I'm not seeing any hands going up. And in the absence of any hands, we're just going to pray. Father, pray your blessing over your people. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May you rule and reign in every area of your your life may you experience the power of god like never before may we hear testimonies like never before of the unusual the unusual what eye has not seen what ear has not heard that which has not even entered into the hearts of men as you have purposed to take the presence of the lord to accept the lord and to allow him to move and to work in your life may you experience what obed eden experienced to the glory of god in jesus name amen god bless you